Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you three things that have totally changed uh, our RDC training so that people are getting way better results. So up to 40% better results that I have been seeing from our programming, which I think is absolutely amazing. So one thing I always do, I always come back and I check my programs and I see what's been happening, what's the big differences and how people have been traveling. And that's, you know, some people don't fill in what they've been doing and that's fine too, but the ones that do, I'll go and check and I'll see and I'll compare programs and I wanna see which programs are performing best, what, uh, how much volume was there, you know, what made it um, good that people actually wanted to follow it. And so I've always been playing around with things and I think in the last year, my programs have become a lot better because of these three things. Now, number one is I've reduced volume. So number one, reducing volume and then really focusing on mechanical tension. So these two put together, I find have definitely increased results. So I've got someone here that's increased their front squat by 61%, 55%, you know, just absolutely massive gains. And I think that is, you know, that's what we should be doing is like looking at these things and coming back and be like, is this actually working? And that's, that's a massive um, gain for me. And if I look back um, two years ago for that year, most of the gains were between 20 and 30%, somewhere down around 10 um, just, you know, it depends how many sessions people are getting in, but I'm always looking at all these different stats. And I think it's really good to be able to look at these stats. So why do I think volume doing less is actually helping? Well, I think it's because a lot of people try and do too much or they want to, they train for fatigue. They want to feel tired rather than chasing those small gains. So rather than doing five sets, we've been doing two or three sets and um, keeping our rep ranges between four and six generally. So mainly keeping people in almost a general preparation phase where I get them to have these like core exercises and we're just gonna keep on building them up and having little wins every single week. So I don't care if they add 100 grams to the bar for one of their sets, that is a win and we're just gonna keep on slowly building on that. So those that combination there of actually giving the advice of how much I want you to put more on the bar each week, whereas before I sort of left it a little bit open so, so people could play with themselves. Now I've gotten really strict on saying, okay, this is how much you can go up, 200 grams to 500 grams on this lift, okay? And people that are sticking to that, I find, are not hitting plateaus. And that's a massive thing is people always hit plateaus and then they stop or they get injured. And so what we're doing is staying away from failing because that's going to cause a lot of fatigue and when you're close to failure too you're, you're probably more likely to injure yourself because you're pushing yourself to that point where your form might break down and so staying those two reps away from failure i'm finding is getting really good results sometimes you know people are going to push to that one rep before failure some people might even put to push to failure every now and then and i don't mind that either Okay, but that's some of the big things I've changed. Now, one of the other things, um, this is going in with number two, is chasing that mechanical tension. So say you're doing a standing bicep curl, what's actually happening is that your brain is also focusing on standing. So a simple thing as doing it seated, it might be the exact same movement, but then your brain could put more emphasis onto the bicep. Okay, which means that you'll probably be able to lift a heavier weight and we can have more mechanical tension, all right? Or we can, ha we can reach higher threshold motor units, okay? Which just means we can get more muscle fiber. So it's things as simple as that. It's like, how can I make things more simplistic so the brain's doing less um, and gets better results? So even with our weight lifting and our power stuff, it's okay, well, we're gonna do more clean shrugs. We're gonna do more squat jumps. Um, we're gonna do more Romanian rhythms in like a small movement um, where it's, it's very easy for you to think about and do, okay? And where we can recruit more uh, high threshold motor units. So I've been finding that's been really working really well. Now during the season, it's even less volume, okay? But more isometrics, more and less range of motion. 
Okay, so we've been doing less range of motion so that we're not causing as much muscle damage because I don't believe that you need the muscle damage. I think muscle damage is not doing anything for strength and it's not doing anything for hypertrophy. I know um, commonly it's, it's believed that you, know, you need muscle damage for hypertrophy, but I don't think it's something that you wanna chase. I think it's, it's actually wasting your time. You actually want mechanical tension. That's what we wanna chase. So that's what we've been going after. And I've definitely seen a significant increase in how the amount of people and the results they're getting. So yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a big thing. So you don't need to go and chase a pump. If you want stronger arms, bigger arms, don't go and chase a pump. Just keep on slowly getting them stronger and then focus on which part of the bicep you wanna get strong. Um, and I have lots of posts on that Instagram post about like, you know, what angles will train what. It's not all about length and partials or training someone in the length of position. When someone's training in the length of position, it's gonna have more muscle damage. Okay, but say like in a bicep curl, when um, you're in the length of positions, you're gonna get the more biceps brachy. Okay, because that's where it's got the best leverage. That's where that part of the biceps working the best. Anyway, you probably don't wanna be bored of that stuff. So the third one is for the speed work, I found that hopping has changed the game. So like, I've always got people to do plyometrics and you know, I've been, I, I love my plyometrics, but really getting, before every leg session, getting my clients to do light hopping. Okay, very light. So holding onto a squat rack and just hopping and just feeling, um, feeling that out. And then just gradually building that up. So what they should do over the session is just, um, they start very light and it's very easy and then start to attack the ground more and more. But if you hold onto a squat rack, it allows you to take a lot of that weight off and get that feel for hitting that midfoot, which then is going to in turn, when you're doing your sprints, it's to that same emphasis of bringing your foot down, pushing you forward, all right? And it's also helping out a lot of people's ankles. So there are some of the big things that have really changed. So focusing on the mechanical tension, less volume, and um, less range during the season. And then, oh, this is lots of things, but they're all sort of tied in together. And then you have your hops, doing light hops, and then building them up and becoming a really good hopper. And also it's doing skipping as well. I find doing some extra skipping ropes is, um, is uh, really good for, yeah, most of my clients, have, have, I've had a lot of good feedback from that. And that, yeah, that's a, being an online coach, it's hard to measure it as much, but like the people that do measure, um, I usually say, you know, measure your 10 meters, your 40 meters, and just film it on your phone and you, then you, um, you edit the video and you can see how fast it was. Um, yeah, so I hope that bring, brings you clarity on what we've been doing and yeah, and I'm gonna keep on. So what I always do is I come back and I, I check each program, you know, how people are performing, what, what were the increases, um, you know, how's that going? And then, yeah, and I just keep refining things. You know, I've got all different programs for different types of people. And then I even, I adjust all the programs as well um, for people because, you know, people do have some slightly different needs. Um, yeah, I hope, I hope that makes sense. If you want to chat about it, send me a message on Instagram. Um, or Facebook Messenger, I'm happy to chat you through it. Um, awesome. Oh yeah, our app's coming out soon, so make sure you be on the lookout for our app. And all our programs are at rugbydevelopmentcoach.com. And yeah, cool. Have a good one.